we're on the way to the Tatakoa Desert. Uh -huh. Place we've been telling you guys about. Sorry we missed it in the last episode, but we're gonna make up for it in this one, I promise ya. So let's go. just pop in right in the middle of this vlog and give y'all our thoughts and answer a few questions we're getting on two things. The first one is masks. We know that back in the United States that um, enough people are vaccinated and have the boosters and, and all that stuff and we don't get political on this channel but we know that the directives are now that if you're vaccinated in the United States you don't have to wear masks. That is awesome. <laughs> but down here guys they're behind. Um, they're doing a good job down here in South America of vaccinating, but they just took a while to get up and going. So not as many people are vaccinated and boosted. So the government still requires masks down here. And as guests in other people's countries, we will always follow the guidelines of the governments. And yes, we are vaccinated, but we have not managed to be able to get our boosters yet because I know y'all are going to ask. It is likely we will have to fly home to get boosters. And it is also likely that some countries down here will start to require them for tourists. So that's the mask and the coronavirus update. The other question we've gotten um, on social media is if Ukraine is even a thought down here. And it absolutely is. The whole world is watching what's going on with Russia invading Ukraine. There are a lot of South American uh, young people that do their collegiate studies in Ukraine several are trapped they're starting to make it home on evacuation flights but yes it is it is a thing down here and i think about the people of ukraine every day i can't imagine the devastation and so our heart definitely goes out to the people of ukraine so we wanted to answer those questions in this video and get it out as soon as we could so y'all kind of know where we are on that now back to the video all right, in the spirit of transparency, Snow has a mosquito buzzing around your face. No, no, he's still here. As I was saying, we had a mosquito flying around the van, driving us crazy. You know we had the chiggers, so we got a mosquito biting us. We're getting ultimate par ultimately paranoid. But anyway, I've got dinner on the stove, some chicken, potatoes, and a rape buzz. Show you this. 
growing. It's almost done. But I wanted to cut up some fruit. And if you guys remember, we got this fruit the other day. Now we were going to Google it and figure out what it was. And we did not. In any event, we're going to cut it open and see what it's like. Now we have two fruits. Again, I don't know their name. This is the other one. It's like an orange with like the skin is like rough like sandpaper and kind of hard. It's got a top. It looked kind of like an orange tomato, but I think it's a fruit. This one looks kind of like a dragon fruit from, yeah, like a dragon fruit kind of. Oh, it is like a, is that passion fruit or jagged dragon fruit? I don't know. Oh, this stuff is good. We're going to have to get some of these. It's got like the texture kind of of a kiwi fruit, but I think it's similar to like a dragon fruit or passion fruit. I think all that's kind of the same. But this stuff is pretty tasty. You want to take a little bite still? Yeah. Mm. Yep. All right. Can you tell me what it's like, so? Let's see. That is good. I don't know what it's like, but it's really good. The seeds give it a little crunch. Yeah, and it's got a lot of moisture, not as much as a watermelon, but it's a very watery fruit. It is good. So that fruit lasted about 30 seconds. It was absolutely devoured. It was really sweet and really good. This one has a lot to live up to. <laughs> now for like a fruit tomato. So. How do I cut this? What do you guys think? Sideways? This Just cut the, button, cut the top off and then we'll be able to see the inside. Let's see what it looks like. Kind of got a thin shell like an orange. Can I peel it? No, nope, it nope. won't quite peel. Feels soft inside. Almost. What is that thing? This thing is weird. It almost looks like an orange, maybe. And then it's got sections around it. I bet there's big seeds in the middle. I can't tell. We're gonna go ahead and just get this outer skin off of the fruit. Manny probably eats that stuff. <laughs> That's just a joke, Manny. Alright, here we go. I don't like that one. What's it taste like? Oh. Oh, I'm not trying it if you don't like it. Oh. Think it's rotten? No, maybe like... You're trying it again? You said ooh and you're trying it again? Oh, you spit it out. I'm not trying it, guys. I'm not trying it. You gotta tell us what it tastes like, Kurt. It's really sour. And, um... I wanna say it's got a little bit of like a little bit of straw but really like a really sour strawberry. But it's got the texture more of, like the same as the other one, kind of a soft and mushy texture. It squeezes real easy. But this green seed pod on the inside is, um, is what's so sour. Wow. Mm. Guys, I'm not trying it. If Kurt spits it out, I'm not trying it. <laughs> All right. So I would call number two a fail, but I would call number one a huge success and something we'll get again. We'll be buying those again. And now, let's eat dinner. Dinner's ready. We'll see you guys in the morning for a fun adventure day in the desert. Gonna be some big hikes tomorrow, guys. All right, we did not expect this. We slept really great last night. It's nice and cool in the van. We ran the air conditioner. We didn't have any power plugged in, so the batteries were pretty low today, but we made it through the night. Vanna's on the dash. She's watching birds because it's raining. In the desert. In the desert. 
So we weren't expecting this. No. Snow's doing her morning little bicycle routine. Our guide was supposed to be here at 7 a.m. He's not here. No. And even if he was, it's we raining. still wouldn't be out hiking because it's raining. And I think out here on these trails, it would be an absolute muddy mess. Also, we couldn't film. We couldn't see the pretty colors. So we've got some decisions to make on what we're going to do. There's Unfortunately, no we're limited on time because remember the tourist visa for us is set to expire. If we wait it out, I don't know how long we can wait. Yeah, we've got that issue and then we've also got the fact that out here there's no Wi-Fi and no cellular connection so we can't even really look at the weather forecast right now. We can't research other places to go. We're kind of stuck so we've got to figure out what exactly we're going to do. What to do, Nanner? What do you want to do, Punky? Who wants to choose first? Alright guys, our excitement has quickly turned to disappointment. Our guide, huh? Joe, which he had a good little thing to remember his name. He said, Yo Joe. So Yo in Espanol is I. So my name is Joe. Yo Joe. And I was like, okay, Joe. And he said, J. Edgar. And I was like, Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover? Yeah, Joe. Joe Edgar Hoover. So I remembered his name. He was supposed to be here at 7. He didn't show up. Of course, it was raining. Another guy was here about 9 and said Joe would be here at 11 or 12. So we've been seven hours waiting on the guy. The whole parking lot's muddy. Fortunately, I was able to get out and shoot some birds. The snow was able to get a little bit of editing done. We just have no cell phone service. It's starting to get hot. You guys can probably see I'm sweating. And uh, so we're gonna go maybe try to self-explore this desert. So if we don't capture it or <laughs> get a glimpse of it, like we hoped, I'm not only sorry for you guys, I'm sorry for us as well, because this was something that we were really excited to see. So, um, yeah, we'll drive down the road and see what we can figure out. I think this is the shortest and easiest way, and I think you can do it. All right, guys, we're doing a little freestyling here in the desert. Our guy didn't show up, but we didn't let that discourage us. Well, we got a little discouraged, but we're still going. And snow's tiptoeing through the cacti. Well, it's muddy too, so I'm having to be pretty careful. All right, so there's two deserts here. Basically, there's a red desert and a gray desert. This is the red desert, <laughs> and in a second, you'll see why. All right, guys, this is pretty steep through here. Watch that little spot there. I met an old man. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I said, tell me your story. All right, we've heard you can eat these things. He took out an old pen. That's right. And wrote something for me. Doesn't really taste like much. Then he kept walking on down the road. Okay guys, I found another one. Look at the size of that granddaddy. It's a little scary because it's bigger. And I thought I'd just seen a ghost. Oh. Yeah, the other one wasn't ready. Mmm. Those are really good. They're kind of juicy inside. Almost like a, like a tomato, really. A little sweeter. Yeah. Like a cherry tomato. Yeah, that's good. I know. Got questions on your mind. Life is gonna happen yeah. one way or the other, whether you like it or not. Stop looking for the answers, and you'll find what you've got. What is going on? 
more characteristic than the desert and the cactus and the old buzzard. <laughs> Look at snow go, guys. Once again, I find myself chasing somebody else and this time it's snow. <laughs> Look at this. Mick's so excited she's out here, guys. We were really discouraged not too long ago. We decided to kind of freestyle it and come out here. And I'm so glad it's worked out. It wasn't that far of a walk to get to this area we're at right now. So, really cool. Look at this place. So we got goats, buzzards, fast flying little birds that I can't get, but I think they're the same birds Kurt was getting from over at our campsite, which is just across the street. <laughs> I think Kurt's about to be a little adventurous. This place is pretty. It's hot. But it sure is pretty. back to the van slowly but surely one final goodbye to the cool red Tatacoma Tatacoa desert all right our first adventure we made it snow made it hey for everybody that was telling me to get walking sticks we have walking sticks already but thank you for the kind advice <laughs> it was needed she put it to work today. All right, pardon the background noise, but we're in the desert. I am not turning down the air conditioner or the fans to do this vlog. So we've driven a ways down this road. We hiked a little bit through the red desert this morning. Not near as much as Kurt would have liked to, but way more than my knee wanted to. So it was a happy balance. Then we got in the van and we drove out past the red desert where it starts to turn gray. We have found little bits and pieces of the gray. I'm not sure if that is all there is of the gray desert or if there's more if we keep going down this road. But the road's getting in a little bit worse shape. We hear some thunder in the background. There could be some more rain coming. And we would like to get off of this, this road before it turns to mud again. So we have turned around. Uh, we're gonna go up here to where we saw a little spot of what would be considered the gray desert. And at least show you a little bit. What everybody says is that the gray desert looks like the moon, and when you're walking through the red desert, it feels like you're on Mars. So we're gonna go take you to the moon, at least a little bitty piece of it. All right guys, a couple of things. 
We made it to the little town of Villa Viejo that is just outside of the Tatacoa Desert. We fueled up and we went back and forth on whether we were going to camp there in that town or whether we were going to get on the road and try to get a little farther south. Well, we decided we're southbound. Uh, we have a tentative camp. We don't know if it's going to work out. We're headed that way. But it was time to leave that area and we just want to point something out. Now, we don't like to beat any areas up. Everywhere we travel to is amazing and the Tatacoa Desert was no different. It was beautiful. But in our research, it seems to be portrayed as a bit more grand than it is. It's actually quite small and um, with several hostels right through the little strip. And uh, every YouTube video we've seen, Kurt, just made it, made it seem a little bigger. Yeah, especially the tourist areas. You know, the desert itself is beautiful and it's a lot bigger than what we saw. We only saw a little piece, but as Snow said, we went to the piece that was reviewed. And uh, yeah, I think the YouTubers kind of exaggerated on that space a little bit. <laughs> but, but with that, what I think we're trying to say is it is not a bucket list destination. We are not upset that we took the time to go there. The ferry ride to get there was actually quite fascinating and cool, um, having to cross that river with our van. So we're happy we went, but if you're on a tight schedule and you're southbound, I think we're saying it's probably not worth the six or seven hours out of your way you have to drive to get there. Do we agree, Kurt? Yes. All right, but we went, we showed it to you, now we're headed to our next camp, so let's go guys. We've arrived in a city uh, called Naiva. Our campsite should probably be 45 minutes or so the other side of this town. We don't know much about this town, but we thought we'd show it to you a little bit anyway. There were no places that showed up on Overlander to camp here, so we're just driving through. But hopefully we found a much cooler place to camp than in a city. So Naive. It's definitely a moto town. Lots of motorcycles here. We just saw a guy on a motorcycle carrying a bike. <laughs> a lady just went by carrying six sets of Chester drawers, <laughs> riding on the back of a motorcycle. <laughs> we have come up on a bridge. It seems like a one-way bridge. Watch out for the motos, Kurt. They're crazy. And I, I think you just... Watch out for these big yellow things. You gotta go between them. Well, we're just gonna go, I guess. Don't hit them. Watch our mirror on this thing. I know you can't hit the cars. This is, this is an incredibly narrow bridge. Always an adventure here, guys. Uh. All right, so these guys are pretty chilled out today. It's been a fairly short drive. We should be to our camp soon. They're kind of like us. They don't start to get grumpy about driving until we get around two and a half to three hours. Then they're like, hey, it's long enough. So this is a little town called Riviera, just outside of that city we just went through. I think it's kind of a little resort town for people that live in that city. We're hoping two or three kilometers on the other side of this little town is where our camp is. Y'all keep your fingers crossed because if it works out, it might turn out to be pretty cool. Wandering hard on a crazy ride 
An open road and a deep blue sky. That's what they say. Feel it calling me like the wind. Trust the compass down in my skin. Walk straight, stay right. That's what they say to me, but I don't fit right inside the lines. Whoa. All right, even if this campsite does not work out, it was a cool drive down here. But in 200 meters on the right, there either will or will not be a place to camp. <laughs> Let's see. There it is. There it is. It is. So I'm gonna scope it out, Curdy, before we get in there. All right, guys. Snow just turned our lemons into lemonade. Mm -hmm. Now you guys know by now that we struggled a little bit over the Tatakoa de Desert. So we decided to get the heck out of Dodge a little bit early. We had didn't have a nearby destination. Snow found this place right here, Agua Termales, which is, if you guys know, been watching, Snow had a fainting spell at the last one we went to, so we need to be careful. But that said, this place is beautiful. I can't wait to show you. Nice, relaxing. It was only a couple, couple hour drive through the farmland, which was really cool. But we are here. We are going to relax and enjoy the evening at this beautiful place. So, good job, Snow. All right, a steep ingress on the way in here. Snow pointed out this is her third physical therapy session of the day. This morning I rode the bike and did the elastic, elastic strap. This afternoon I hiked in the desert. Today we're walking up this hill and you're about to see where we're headed. Okay, so here it is. We're parked down here. We're about to go through this entrance. You can see there's a couple big pools. This is the hot river that runs down and it looks like they have a big so slide and some restaurants and some other things. So let's go check this place out. When I was young, my mom told me, son, that soul of yours was born to run. It's your adventure for you to choose. And you'll know home when you'll find your roots. Just remember, don't walk straight, stay right. That's what they say to me, but I don't fit right. In essence, there's two pools here. So this pool is sort of like normal swimming pool temperature. And so it's kind of nice. You can tell it's treated with chlorine, so the water is pretty clear. And then you have the hot pool down there. The water they drained it this morning, so it looks like they change it out every day. And then there's this giant slide here. And I didn't even know this existed. But it looks like there's a little trail up here. A little bamboo forest. I didn't even know it was here. Look at this, guys. What a surprise. And my little buddy's still with me. Hey, boy, what you doing? All right, we're going to start off with some dinner. What would you guys order? You guys guessed it. <laughs> sure you knew. I got the whole fried fish. Snow got some pachuga with it looks like a cheesy sauce on top and some french fries. And some papas. And we then, and then we're getting in the hot water. Yeah. Oh, and here comes some insulata. I was wondering. Okay, great. If there's one thing I can do, it's eat a whole fried fish. He's telling y'all the truth. guys 
it is time to go and get into one of these hot pools. Now the hot pools are fed from a natural hot river. So right down there is the hot water. Let's go get in the pool. Is there a place with sun all year round and pina coladas with pretty faces and sand on the ground? I want to stop this ongoing train before I lose my mind and go insane. I don't want to sleep every night I want a lot of spark in the dark I don't want to say I'm okay Living the same every day Come run beside me, let's take off Let's leave this place For another place oh. All we need is different. It's hard at this speed to see anything. Just tell me what you need, and I'll listen. I'll listen. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!